And we're talking with uh, Ed Whalen from the uh, Ethics and Public Policy Center, their website, eppc.org. So Elena Kagan uh, really breezed through all this, despite some, some troubling things in her past. What were some of those troubling things, uh, as far as you can tell, Ed? Well, there's quite a bit. Uh, for starters, there was her action as dean of Harvard Law School and excluding military recruiters from the law school jobs office. She engaged in extremist rhetoric about uh, the military, about the uh, "don't ask, don't tell" law that uh, Congress and President Clinton uh, had adopted. Uh, she said it was a uh, profound wrong, a moral injustice of the first order. The sort of rhetoric that you think might be limited to uh, things like genocide. Uh, and then as Solicitor General, uh, where her job was to vigorously defend federal law, she took actions that, that served to undermine uh, both Don't Ask, Don't Tell and the Defense of Marriage Act. So I think we see that she's someone who's willing to uh, indulge her ideological biases, even when her uh, legal duty calls for her to do otherwise. Uh, we see as well the, the, the bizarre uh, episode in which she praised uh, a, a hard-left uh, activist, Israeli justice, as as uh, her judicial hero, her implausible efforts to explain that away. And uh, in some ways, the most striking, I think, was an exchange she had with Senator Coburn, where uh, he just asked her to state that she personally agreed with the proposition of the Declaration of Independence, that uh, we human beings have inalienable rights. Uh, Elena Kagan couldn't get herself to say that she agreed personally with that proposition, proposition kept trying to divert things to uh, what her role as a as a justice would be, so I think we have someone who, uh, in, in many respects, is uh, divorced uh, from uh, traditional American values, the values uh, in, embedded in the Constitution, and who will, as a justice, uh, both rubber stamp Obama's uh, big government agenda and uh, work to entrench the agenda of the left on matters like uh, same-sex marriage. And I think we had some folks on the Republican side uh, during these hearings and, and the confirmation and, and the whole process who were just of a mind, well, she's going to replace a, another liberal justice, so why not just give them one? And, and I, I think with that, uh, with that mentality, we're not doing the American people uh, justice by going through and looking at each one of these. Now, it is, of course, the president's prerogative to have who he wants to as a nominee, but it's up to the Senate to make sure they're not going to be an activist justice, so they're not going to be ruling based on world court rulings or, 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 or any other country's rulings. And I think it's incumbent upon these senators to do their job, and I think you're in agreement with me. We had some who, who did not do their job. Well, I think that's so. Uh, you know, I want to emphasize, too, that, of course, President Obama had his lawless empathy standard, and then he himself, as a senator, had voted against both the Roberts and Alito nominations, and even voted to filibuster the, the, the Alito nomination. Um, I will emphasize, though, that, uh, you know, let's, let's have in mind that there were a, a remarkable, I mean, impressive 37 no votes against Kagan. Uh, when you have a Senate with 59 Democrats in it, you're going to get a rubber stamp of uh, virtually anyone that President Obama nominates. Uh, and I think a number of Republicans uh, did a good job, uh, uh, Senator Sessions, Senator McConnell, Senator Kyle, a number of others, uh, Senator Hatch, of, of uh, exposing uh, some of the flaws in Lena Kagan's record and, and really uh, making sure there's some sort of uh, meaningful debate over judicial philosophy. But look, Americans need to, to understand, uh, when you elect a president like this and have, uh, you know, have 59 Democratic senators, you're going to end up with uh, justices who uh, adopt the left's, uh, the, the left's view of the, of the judicial role, and we're going to be paying the price for that for some time. Oh, no kidding, no kidding, because uh, when you no telling what's going to happen in the second half of or the back nine of Obama's term, and I don't, I don't think that at least if the elections were held today, he wouldn't stand a chance at re-election. But we can't, we can't uh, count on that. So we have to have in November a huge win for the Republicans if we're going to at least block some of this uh, socialist agenda that the Obama administration is trying to force down our throats, aren't we? I think uh, gains in both houses would be very helpful in stopping uh, or slowing down his agenda. Uh, look, he still is going to have uh, remarkable clout, and uh, let's remember, uh, we need to, you know, we, we, we need to find a, a candidate who will defeat him. It's uh, one thing to, to uh, have, uh, you know, general approval, disapproval ratings for President Obama. It's another thing to p p pair him against uh, someone. So uh, uh, Republicans, conservatives, uh, you know, need to start sorting out 
uh, who the candidate is who, uh, you know, ought to replace him. Well, I ask a lot of people who come on this show this, who, who are you looking at now? Who do you think may emerge as that person? Well, I'm going to keep mum on that, I guess, for a variety of reasons. I will say that I'm, uh, I, I like the model of looking to folks who have experience as governors well, yeah. Are you moving towards Chris Christie? Is that where you move? <laughs> because I think he's getting he's getting a lot of interest with ground uh, and, and a groundswell of conservatism out there in the Tea Party movement. This guy seems to be the guy who can do the job. Well, he's certainly been impressive uh, in the episodes that I've seen. I, I didn't mean to be signaling him over others. I think there are a number of of fine potential candidates, including uh, in addition to, to Governor Christie, uh, you know, Tim Pawlenty. Uh, Mitch Daniels, uh, you know, Mitt Romney obviously has a gubernatorial experience as well. Uh, look, we can all find uh, uh, faults with, uh, with, with uh, uh, you know, various folks. And I'm not claiming that, we, that there's anyone out there who, who is, who is you know, clearly the perfect candidate. We don't have that right now, I think. Um, but we need, to, uh, you know, we need to start this process early and really find a candidate who can, who can prove that uh, he or she has what it takes. Yeah, and that's going to be, I mean, it may be a bloody fight because there are a lot of folks there. there some, and, and, and the good news is, is there are some good qualified folks out there, some that a lot of people haven't heard of, but there are some good qualified folks out there. In the meantime, we're going to have to deal with the, with the second half of this first term of the Obama administration. And do you think that the Senate is going to fall uh, to the Republicans this fall, or is that just too much to ask for? Well, I don't claim any uh, expertise as a political prognosticator. It looks like a steep hill to 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 climb, uh, and it would really take everything I think to 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 go uh, Republicans' way on election day. Uh, I was a Senate staffer as it happens back in '94 when few people thought that the uh, the the body would swing to uh, Republicans uh, on election day that year, and 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 it did as well. well of course, with the House uh, being taken over. But, uh, you know, we'll see. It's, I, again, I, I, I don't claim any political expertise there. Uh, but uh, they're going to need to do something because this administration, will, uh, with, with the uh, confirmation of Elena Kagan, I mean, they're only going to be emboldened to do this again with somebody who is an activist justice. And I think you and I would both agree that she is, I mean, even if you're looking at this just as a, as a centrist, she is, she is not the answer. I mean, we need somebody at least who is going to be following the Constitution, and we can't even get her to confirm that she would that she would uh, do that. Well, you know, again, anyone who President Obama um, nominates uh, is going to be um, decidedly to the left. His whole understanding of the Constitution and our legal culture has been shaped by the modern legal academy. Uh, and uh, yeah, if he has a substantial majority uh, in, in the Senate. It's going to be hard to stop. Now, it's, it's not clear at this point whether we're going to see any uh, additional vacancies over the next couple of years, but I wouldn't rule it out, uh, whether it's, uh, say, voluntary on, 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 uh, on the part of someone like uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg or whether circumstances force it uh, in, in, in another instance. And, and, and have in mind that if, say, uh, Justice Kennedy or Justice Scalia were to, to leave the court, uh, and believe me, I have plenty of criticism of Justice Kennedy, but, but, but if, if, if uh, he were to leave the court uh, and Obama were to name his successor, the court would swing wildly to the left. To, to the left. Justice Kennedy has been the man in the middle. That, 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 that middle would move um, well to the left with any Obama nomination. Right. All these 5-4 decisions that have come down on the, uh, on the side of reason would be unreasonable. And, of course, there have already been lots of 5-4 decisions coming down the other way. And, uh, you know, haven't, again, uh, lots of folks think that there are five votes on the current Supreme Court to invent a federal constitutional right to same-sex marriage. Right. A, a right that would, uh, that would result in uh, those of us who uh, believe and support traditional marriage being labeled and p- penalized as, uh, as bigots. One more question for you before we let you go, and and that is about this Arizona thing. It's going to be fast track to the Supreme Court. I don't know if it'll get there before this fall. Probably, I don't know. Probably not. But uh, do you think the Supreme Court? How do you? Well, I just. Uh, I know you don't like to pros- uh, prognosticate, but would any inkling of any feeling of how they you think the Supreme Court would come down on that Arizona law thing? Well, I think the the timetable is likely to be a lot longer than than, than your question suggests. Um, so uh, I don't know whether that we'll see it uh, to the court, uh, you know, even by the end of President Obama's uh, uh, term. Uh, 
you know, from what I've, I haven't looked at the case closely, but it looks to me as though the, the, the uh, preemption um, claim is not a serious one. Uh, but with this, you know, it's, again, I'm wary of predicting what the court will do because I have been so often disappointed by it. So, yeah. Uh, Haven't we all? All right. Uh, Ed Whalen with the president of the Ethics and Public Policy Center. You can find them at eppc.org. Ed, appreciate it very much.